welcome back to my channel so today is going to be a bit of a different video so i upload photos on my instagram every single day i upload a video and an outfit photo and then the occasional selfie as well is thrown in there so i always get questions especially on snapchat about what editing software i use how i take my photos so i thought in this video i'm going to spill all my secrets for you guys so the first tip that i have to give to you guys is you need to find your good side what is your good angle what do you want to hide what do you want to accentuate you need to kind of look at your face in the mirror and be like okay this angle i look better this angle i don't look as good for me this is my like good side because i have more of a defined jawline here this side i have a really short jaw so when i smile from the side it's like really short whereas when i smile from this side like Right and ding. So obviously you know yourself more than anyone else. Obviously you don't want to be like a one trick pony. You don't want to keep taking photos from one angle. You want to kind of switch up to do some like forward straight on shot some from the side some from the other side some looking down i always do like hand shots like this so i put like my hand in a little bit more feminine that's why i always tend to have my nails done now because if you've got like ugly short chip nails it don't look cute you know even if you have short nails make sure they're all nice and polished and stuff and the secret is you need to take about not even joking like 50 to like 100 photos and then you pick the best one i don't know how people can just take one photo and then upload that one photo no bitch it has to be a process so i normally whenever i take photos so especially outfit photos i always get between at least 50 70 to 100 even like 300 shots of one outfit and then i literally go through and i favorite them all so that's how you kind of like finalize and then it gets filtered down to your favorites and then i kind of edit like one or two and then i save them in draft so that they'll be ready for instagram and then I upload it separately so i won't upload like two back to back i'll upload one and then a couple of weeks later i'll go back and recycle my photos so whenever you don't have content you'll have like photos that you can re-edit and stuff like that of like different poses even if you wear the same outfit but you have to think that not everyone goes on your instagram every single day and not people will remember that same outfit so even if you do some older photos it doesn't matter it still looks new you know if people haven't been on your page or new followers have come to your page you just need to have variety mainly if you have a big forehead you don't want to take your selfies from too high because it'll make your forehead look bigger so then you want to take them a bit lower whenever you take outfit photos you want the photographer to kind of hold it a bit lower so you won't hold it up high because you'll make it look really short you kind of hold it like in the middle here or you get to kind of crouch down or kneel down and then take the photo from there kind of like aim it at your belly button and then you kind of look tend to look taller if you are taking selfies on your phone i'd recommend to always use the back camera never use the front selfie camera because the front selfie camera doesn't have as many megapixels i know it's so tempting though because you want to kind of see what you look like but a little tip that i have for you is so instead of taking photos like this you know with the front camera it's always really shitty so you don't want to use this front camera i only use that literally on snapchat but if you're going to upload something on instagram you want to make it sure it's your best quality that you have so even if you don't have a camera it's fine just use your phone but you always use the back camera and a little tip that i have for you guys is so if you're taking photos use the back camera like this and then to see yourself i also hold like another mirror this is like a i don't even want to talk about this <laughs> but i use this mirror and i hold it here in front of me so i have like one mirror in front and then the phone in front and then i can look at myself in the mirror to see if i'm getting like the right angles and stuff so if i'm gonna like really really close i go like this and then i press the volume button and it takes a photo for me you can take some closer eye shots like this so i can kind of like see myself and you can kind of frame and like kind of tilt downwards so if you're taking eye shots you want to go like almost like you're squinting you can even look into the lens look down away from the lens also look up as well to it at an angle and it's all about honestly taking loads and loads and loads of photos and then you go through them and see what you like and what you don't like so yeah guys that's a tip to hold it from the back and then use a the mirror at the front and then you can still see what you're doing you know no one wants to follow you for logos photos yeah you heard what Grang said if your quality is not good then people are not likely to follow you if your quality looks really good it'll make the makeup stand out a lot better if you have like really low resolution your makeup is not going to look as sharp and crisp and as high definition like you need to think like with this day and age people are using like dslr cameras you know you can't be using like a grainy snapchat downloaded photo you know but if you're looking to grow your instagram you can't be uploading those type of photos especially at the start you're only going to be impressing like your friends and family all the stuff like that but if you want to kind of expand your instagram and grow and get reposted by brands like you need to post real quality photos you can't be like taking it with 
snap crown filter and then uploading that thinking that like, Morphe brush is going to be post you because it's highly unlikely unfortunately even though that filter makes you look bomb you know when you have bad skin days you know I feel your pain girl and then also like whenever you have like a long dress like sometimes it looks too granified on camera but in real life it looks okay so what I always do is I kind of like lift the corner of the dress so a little bit more thigh is showing so i'll play some photos here of what i'm talking about where you kind of just lift the corner of the dress and like just play with it with your hands so it looks a bit more like candid a bit more feminine i always prefer it when my photos look like it's a very natural shot and not too posy even though i'm posing my fucking ass off you know freezing in the cold and heels whenever i pick the photo i just like it when it looks natural as if like i was naturally just playing with my hair even though there's nothing fucking in my hair to play with i'm posing like this Change my hand, look down, like cross my hand like this. Yeah, you should honestly just change it and it doesn't matter what you look like as long as you have a lot of variety and then you can scroll through and then you'll know what your angles are, what your shifty angles are. And it's all about to making the photographer go back and go down a bit lower. That's the that's the key guys. That's the key, key. I get the keys, keys, keys. So I'll quickly talk about what camera I use for all my selfies and also for videos as well. I use my Canon 80D and I've just got the normal kit lens. So this is a 18 to 55 millimeter lens. It's just the lens that it comes with. I also have a Canon 50 millimeter lens, which I really, really like. But the 50 millimeter lens is only good for if you're taking photos, if you want the background to be blurry. So if you've got like um, loads of objects in the background, you need to be quite far away from it and then it'll blow it out. But if you're standing on like a white wall, or like a brick wall or stuff there's no point using that camera because it's not going to blow it out because you're too close to the background but if you've got like the whole street down the road or something like that and you want to kind of blow it out and give it that kind of like bokeh effect that's when you use the 50 millimeter lens but the only thing about the 50 millimeter lens is that you have to stand quite far away from the subject like grab my photographer so he has to stand really far away from me to get like a, a midway shot or like a full body shot he has to stand really, really far because the lens you can't zoom in and out so the lens that comes with the canon ATD, it literally can zoom in and zoom out so i always recommend and just go for the standard lens and then slowly you can kind of build up your lens game I actually don't know much about photography I don't know much about lenses but I always shoot in manual mode as well so I can change up my aperture and all that stuff so that every single time I shoot it's at like the same setting in all my videos so I don't want my lighting to go all in and out in and out and stuff that's why I always use studio lighting I never use daylight I know a lot of people use daylight but I personally find it's very inconsistent especially when you live in London where sometimes it's cloudy and sometimes a little bit of sun when I have studio lighting it's going to be very continuous upload a photo in the daytime upload a photo in the nighttime it will still look the same yeah guys I use a ring light I use three soft boxes so I have a soft box here a softbox here and a softbox up here and then a ring light around the camera and then I also recently just introduced these lights here I'll try to show you guys oh shit oh these are bright so this is from a brand called lamps for makeup so this is the big pro six bulb one but I'll show you what it looks like with and without so this is like the lighting with the lamps for makeup and then this without it this is what i used to film like before so in my couple old videos like a couple of videos but i used to just use this setting here but i find when i use this setting my skin looks really gray especially now when i look at it like this i can really notice the difference i used to be really happy with this lighting but now when i have like these lighting it's just a little bit more warmer i don't want the lighting to be very very yellow but i find with the other light because it's so white it kind of washes me out and it makes me look really like dingy like it looks really gray whereas these make me look a lot more vibrant you know so you can see the difference there and i'll also show you without my soft boxes so i'll turn off the soft boxes the three soft boxes so you can see what it looks like so this is just literally the ring light with the two lamps for makeup and then i'll show you with just the ring light girl this is too goddamn dark I'm, look, i can't even focus there's no freaking lighting on me so this is with the ring light lamps for makeup and then i'll show you with the soft boxes again yeah, so bright. And then I'm also going to turn off my ring light so you can see what it looks like with the soft boxes and then the two lamps for makeup. Can you see the difference there? It's very, very slight, isn't it? It's not that much, actually. A bit of waste of electricity. But it just kind of gives a little bit more of a softer kind of glow. To be honest, I wouldn't really recommend this ring light because I realised when I went to a party from Sleep, they have an LED ring light, and that is so much brighter than this one. This is like a fluorescent bulb. This one's from Newer, but I don't think I would recommend it because I went to that Sleep party, and the LED freaking ring light was so bright. I was like, mm, I need me one of these. So I'll also show you with the Just a Free soft boxes and not the lamps for makeup 
So this is no ring up, this is just the soft boxes. You see a difference? It just doesn't, I don't know. I just feel like I need all of these lights to make me complete. And then also for my background, this here is literally, guys, just a blind. It's a blind, guys. A literally a black out blind. It's nothing special. I also have a black one as well that I'll roll down. So this is my black background. I never ever film on my black background anymore because it just looks too dark on my feet and it kind of like changes the lighting of my makeup and stuff like that if you guys do want a black one you can get a black one as well you can also get different colors so i used to put a lot of colored backgrounds at the back here but now i just prefer to stick to white just so that it looks a bit more consistent because sometimes i find like when i try to put like backgrounds in there it got like creases in there it's not straight and a little bit of like background is showing i just rather just stick to white because it's easy i can just roll up and down when i want it to you know and this is literally like a blackout blind that you can buy from I guess I bought this from Amazon. I'll try to leave the links down below to the equipment that I have in this video. This was literally like 20 pounds, guys. You have to make sure you buy one that's black out. Otherwise, when you roll it down, when you put the lights on, it's going to be see-through in the background. So you need to make sure it's black out, okay? Black out. And you need to measure your ceiling compared to where you sit as well because you don't want to buy one that's too short and then it won't go all the way down. This, whenever I don't use it, I can literally just roll it up and it just goes right up to the ceiling and then literally my this is my boyfriend back here my boyfriend's laying back here guys i don't live in like a big house whatsoever me and my boyfriend share a room so i don't want to hear any excuses about i haven't got enough room i haven't got this i haven't got that you gotta make it work you gotta be creative you know you can't just think like oh i don't have this so that's why i can't do it like that's the wrong mentality to think about anything so yeah just make things work for your situation because everyone has to start some way so let's move on to the next bit which is just as important as taking the photos itself it's the editing process okay you guys are gonna see the real deal okay do not judge me i'm telling you guys the truth so please appreciate it okay give me a thumbs up if you're liking this video so far so i'm gonna be starting off with photos okay so this is my photos here so i have my favorites folder this is very very important so i'll just quickly show you so i want to edit a selfie first and then i'll also show you how i edit my out for the day photos imagine if i just took this photo here i literally go through them all and i always tap it so that it's just black so i can see exactly what photo i like and i literally go through it and if i like the photo i'll press heart and then that will automatically go in my favorites folder it's very overwhelming you know when you have like a lot of photos to go through you don't know what one to edit so if i finalize it down into like the ones i really really like the look of like i like this one looking down you can see all my eyeshadow in here so i normally shoot my selfies in like my landscape mode or oh, this is cute as well i always prefer the ones looking to the side or looking down so then now we'll go back into favorites and you guys can see like here i've got all the ones i just picked right this is how i decide what ones i want to edit okay because i'm not going to edit all of these like come on now so what i do is i go onto instagram and then i go on to my favorite and then on here i can kind of like size up what it's kind of going to look like on instagram so let me pick one okay so i'm going to edit this one because i can see there's there's bits in here that i would definitely be editing okay so we need to remember what that one was when i do selfies i only edit on facetune this is like the main big guy if you don't have facetune you need it i think it's only like 2.99 or something but it's so so worth it and i know everyone uses facetune as well there's also a facetune 2 but i've tried to use it and i don't like it as much because i feel like it's not as targeted i don't know okay so we're gonna go into facetune okay so i'm gonna find that photo that i liked so it was this one here looking off to the distance to find that hamburger okay so it loads my photo up here okay so i'm gonna zoom in can you guys see on camera i don't know if you can see but basically all of this bit here i've got little bit of like skin showing where the flash is kind of like popped off so basically the lash line is not as dark anymore when i look at the screen here it doesn't look as dark it doesn't look bad it almost looks like a dark gray i think because i take it with flash it kind of washes out the photo a bit so we need to be fixing that i've also got some like spots here little blemishes like all of this that needs to go bitch look at all this bitch like no one's got fucking perfect skin so you need to edit in a way where it looks smooth but it doesn't look too fakey fake you don't want it to look like you got played it all over your face okay the first step that i always do always is i go to smooth first i'll always start on smooth and then if i've got like a really bad spot or something i'll use a smoother tool for the really really bad areas but i would always kind of go over with smooth first so there's this first teardrop here and i always kind of just like lightly tap so you guys see my finger swiping motions it's literally like just going back and forth i never got like this 
all over and I always want to pinch and target where I want to go first and then I kind of go over all of this before I used to leave the texture of my highlight on there but I find sometimes it doesn't look as nice it just looks weird that like the rest of it's smoother than this bit is a little bit like grainy sometimes I just tap it as well so when it goes to around my nose where I'm starting to get like creases and stuff I don't want to smooth it because it'll blur out all the shadows and you still want it to look like you've got a crease of your nose there you know I hate it when girls photoshop it and they literally smooth all the bits so the side of their nose is not even like no crease there and when it comes to here as well like, I've got a little bit of like I don't know how to explain it I've got a little bit like I don't know cakiness or something there but I always get it no matter what foundation I use so I always kind of just tap it here and then you guys see my pores as well like that's nasty shit so I literally just smooth all that out I'm gonna, I'm gonna be here for ages because I literally just smooth forever and I never smooth along the line so wherever you see that like, definition you never want to smooth on there if anything you want to like define there right so you can also see here I always have to like smooth this bit out and this is probably where I'll use a smoother tool because you can see that like, where my old tattoo is a little bit raised so there I want to really really smooth this out so that's when I'll use the actual smoother tool so it'll just make it look a bit flatter yeah. and then here as well I'll smooth this bit out also along my lip as well sometimes I get like you know this nasty ass dry bits here so I'll go in with smooth at first I'll make sure my lips look really really smooth and then like on this bit here where it's like almost like different colors that's when I kind of go in with smoother and it just kind of like kind of blends the color into one kind of thing so it doesn't look like you got some dry skin Gabby lip mark dry saliva there so i do use smoother a lot of people when i watch the tutorials they don't use smoother but i do have to use it like, sometimes and then like, along here as well i've got a little bump from lip filler and then i also smooth my chest as well and sometimes a little bit of my hand so it doesn't look too veiny so that's quite good so far okay so i'm going to show you before after before after can you guys see you just literally press this button here and it goes back and forth to show you what it previously looked like and what it looks like after and then that's done if you press cross it's going to delete it also you always want to make sure you tick it now i'm going to go into this bit here if i smooth this out it'll be really really hard because obviously i've got eyeshadow in here so you don't want it to look like oh my god like super smooth here and then here's really textured because this eyeshadow is going to look a bit textured so you guys see i've got like these two spots here so i'll go into the patch tool which is at the bottom here you know, i press patch and this here will clone the pieces of skin basically so this bit here will move onto this bit so if i want to like put this patch onto this patch then i'm kind of move this bit around i literally just kind of move it until you can see it looks kind of natural and then you can see that this is before and this after before after you can make it bigger as well so if you want a big patch but normally i kind of keep it quite small if you do a big patch i find you can kind of see the ring around the patch it doesn't look as natural so that's good to me and then that's it for the patch tool so if you've got like lots of little spots you can also use a patch tool and then go smooth on top sometimes i do that as well if i got like lots of little baby spots so now i'm going to move onto here and this is the trick guys to making it not look drawn on eyeliner i don't know if you can see but there's some bits here where my eyes watered a bit it's not as black anymore like up here it's it's got like a little bit of like skin showing through so i go into the tones tool so a lot of people when they do the tones tool they'll literally just go to black and they'll literally just go like this and just paint on a brand new freaking eyeliner like this but I find when you do it like that, it looks very, very fake. Like, you can literally see, like, a fake artificial line. Like, it doesn't look like it's blended in, okay? So, I would not suggest that. So, how I edit is I go into tones and I do the picker tool. And I'll find a bit that's really, really dark. So, I'll, like, tap it, like, here, right? So, when you see the colour here, it almost looks black. When I tap it, it's not at the bottom. Because I want it to all blend in, okay? So, I zoom in really, really close. And you guys can see here, it's all got all these, like, white skinny bits. So, I literally just go in and I just kind of like fill in the lash line i never draw like a big long line i always just do like little smooth dot 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 like here you can see like my lash line is not that dark sometimes if you want it really crisp you can do like a long and if it goes onto the white bit you press erase and then you can literally just go through it like that like i'll show you sometimes on my towel here you guys see this bit's not that black so i'll go in with the tones tool and i'll literally like with the tones it's not really like a line or anything it kind of goes a bit more like smudgy now like, i'll show you an example okay i wouldn't do this but i'll just show you what this tool can do okay so i just drew this on like crazy mama like, like you can see like that looks like a horrible towel so i'll go in with a ray and then i'll go on the edges and make this bit really really sharp like there and you can see like i almost made like a, a whole new towel obviously that looks terrible like i would never ever do that sometimes times are hard you know girls so you kind of use a raise tool like when you want to flicker this out and then you can kind of taper your own 
you can literally like draw your makeup on with this you can see look, look how thick that freaking wing is now that mini wing mama wing that looks a bit crazy so i'm going to erase all that but i will go over it just slightly and i don't mind if i go over it because i can just erase it just like that oh and you have to be careful as well because sometimes when you tap like on your skin when you're moving out it kind of leaves like a black mark here and then also like in here obviously this bit's not that dark anymore so i literally go in between like the erase tool and the tones tool so this is after and this is before just makes it a little bit darker a little tint tint darker normally my makeup is all right anyways Oh, I think that's a bit too much. <laughs> that's a bit too cray cray. So once I finish everything, I'll go in with this tool here. This is like the big seller. With this, you can basically sharpen something so that you can literally make your eyelashes stand out. So sometimes your eyelashes doesn't have like really, really defined lashes. So with this, you can literally just press along your lashes. Like this is before and then after it gets a lot more defined so I literally can go over and I always go over my like pupil as well because I can always see like lights and shit in there it just looks really cool and just really really good for eyeshadow and detail and stuff like that I always go along my jawline I go along my lip line and then around my nostrils to bring out that crease and then I always go along my jewellery to make my jewellery stand out I literally just tap I never like go like this all the way around never for anything I don't even know if you can see a difference very very slight differences the whole point of this is guys is not to change what you actually look like it's kind of like just to show what you look like but just smooth everything out i'll show you another little tip as well so you know with the highlight here like my highlight is quite bright here but i want it to be a bit brighter here so what i'll do is i'll go into the tones app again i'll press the palette button and then along here it gives you kind of like skin tones and i kind of go with the more yellowy type here so you can see the whole colors change to yellow and i kind of just lift it all the way to the top so not all the way to where it's white like this but like kind of long here so it still has a bit of a yellow tint to it and i press tones and then i literally just tap it just along here so it makes it look brighter at the top and then you kind of want to fade it out so i tap more here and then here i tap like one or two times just so it fades slightly it's all about the fade guys even blending your eyeshadow you gotta blend your face tune too so this is before after and then i normally do my cheekbone and then i do my tip of my nose as well to make this bit brighter it might be a bit too bright it's a bit cray cray like if i've got discoloration as well like here can you see like the top of my lip here has a shadow bit i'll also go into tones and then i'll pick like my skin tone here and then i'll just take away so if you've got like dark under eye circles that's kind of peeping through this would be perfect for that and then look that the shadow is basically gone and then sometimes as well i'm not gonna lie i kind of like face tune my hair so sometimes this one's not that bad but sometimes like my bun just say like i'll have a bun on my hair and it'll be like lopsided because i tilted my head or something i'll go and reshape tools and then i press refine so if you reshape you can basically like fucking mold your fucking face right but obviously i don't want to do that if you press reshape it'll just do like small areas so to say if i want my hair to be bigger i'll kind of give it more volume so if i pull up a bit like this it can really like make your hair look a lot fuller if you've got a fucking fat ass forehead you can kind of pull this down a little bit i don't really tend to do that that much i do a lot of times on my hair because i want my hair to be really nice and full and thick and sometimes if i've got like a kink in it i can kind of take out the kink and make it straighter by doing this so no hair more hair no hair with extensions fake extensions refine extensions <laughs> okay so i think this is pretty much good for me this is the image before after before after so i save that to my camera roll and then that is ready to go on instagram now oh i'll also show you as well because obviously i shot this on landscape this is good for like thumbnails when you're doing like youtube videos sometimes when i want it to be like more like a rectangle so it's bigger on the instagram when you scroll through it i'll go to canvas on here and then i cut out all this extra white bit so obviously i don't need all this shit right so i'll kind of just frame it so it just looks a bit more like a rectangle like this and i crop it so it's more like straight like that and then save the camera roll and then on instagram i'll press this button here to make it either a square or like a rectangle and i press next and i always go into edit and this is where i do the contrast i don't do this on any other apps i literally just do it on instagram like you can bump up the contrast on here i normally do contrast a little bit of brightness but i don't really need brightness in this photo but i do a little bit of structure I don't know what structure does, it just makes it a bit more sharp. And then I also go into sharpen. And then this is before. It's very, very subtle. There's not really freaking much difference. But I also, this is what I do so that I'm always on time for my post. I always schedule my post into draft. 
now that i edited a little bit here if i press back so you can either discard it throw it away you don't want to use it or save as a draft so when i save it as a draft it will save at the top here right i can even like edit the caption as well if i want to so when i'm on the train when i have more time on my hands i'll literally like type out all my caption blah 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 whatever 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 and then afterwards i'll go back and then it will save to my draft and then when it's time to upload like i upload at certain times of the day so then when it's time to upload i'll press next and then it remembers all of your caption and everything and then i just press share so really nice and simple if you you know have outfit photos but you don't want to be typing the caption and stuff you can all pre-save it so that you're always ahead of time you can literally press share when it's the right time for you to upload okay so i also want to show you quickly while i'm here if you change your account into a business account you literally go onto here i really recommend for you to do this obviously mine's already a business setting but you press here and it says switch to business account so you press here and you have to link your facebook to it and then this will allow people to email you so they can just press that button and then your email will just pop directly on here so when you change your account to a business account it will allow you to see all of your insights so this is so so important guys so this shows you how many impressions you get in one week so how many people visit your page how many reach you got compared to last week how many views your profile got how many people clicked on your website link how many people emailed you is very very important and then on here it also shows you how many views you got so this is like a year this is my top video and then you can click from like you can do like six months seven days whatever and you can see like your engagement and stuff so when you have like people emailing you it's very important so you have all this data you can show them like look i get two million views a video and then it also shows you your story and um, the following as well like what time is best to post throughout the day you can see that like, on here my best time to post around 9 p.m which is when i post every day and you can see how many followers you have exactly how many women versus men you have the age range your top locations my top location is london but then the united states is my biggest platform just very very important guys to to have all this like insight and then you can also see like here when i click on a photo i can click my insight so i can see like how many likes i got for this post so when you're doing like sponsored posts you can see exactly how much engagement you got so you can screenshot and send it to the people that hired you and you can get more money next time you know what i'm saying guys you know what i'm saying let me quickly show you how to edit a outfit photo and this is going to take forever to show you because i do like three different apps for this so let me show you this one here let me show you one of these because this is i edited quite a lot on this one here so here you guys can see i'm wearing like a sequin outfit here okay i'm going to show you this one and then i always click on recommended size you can also use the maximum size as well but i just do regular okay so you can see here it's my outfit is a sequin misguided little number i have like some leg sheen going on so you guys can see here my bun is not cute this is when it's like lopsided that i was telling you guys because i tilted my head so this is when i'll kind of refine my bun but my bun look a bit bigger like that i don't really need to ever like smooth my skin out but sometimes i do a little bit and then i'll do it on my legs as well so if i've got like scars or anything like that just like smooth all that if you've got some hairs on your legs you know what i'm saying guys when you haven't shaven for a year but you guys can see all here it's all like dirty yellowy that's nasty bitch so what i've learned from other bloggers is i go into the whiten tool and literally press whiten all the way here. i literally just go over it all but it takes so long to edit outfit photos because it's not just your face you know you have to edit the background okay i'm just just gonna quickly show you because otherwise we'll be here for ages but obviously i'll normally go all around my body before after it just makes the background look brighter and then when the background looks brighter naturally yourself will look brighter and then i'll kind of zoom really close into my body so i can get really close around my leg even if you go on your skin a bit you literally just press erase and then it takes it away so you can almost do the whole thing and just erase out your body if you want to but obviously i'm for time purposes i'm not going to finish it but you guys can see like it just makes the background whiter and then i'll also show you like here on my legs i always want my legs to really shine like you can see the shine is here already but i'll use the same tool again i'll use tones and then i'll click on it onto that the lightest bit and then i'll go up a bit so it's the same kind of like palette but a bit brighter so i zoom in and i'll just go in a line down the center of my leg and it makes your leg look 
that you have more dimension to it. So I love this button because sometimes when you press it, it looks like you haven't made much difference. But then when you see after, you're like, oh god dang, yeah. So then I'll do it the same on the other leg as well. Oh my god, sometimes you have to be careful. You don't want to look patchy. I'm just gonna do things like quite roughly. Also, like I'll go in with the details tool. I'll press detail, detail. I'm just gonna leave it like this for face you. I don't really do much else, but let's go on to the other app. And then I go into another app which is called Retouch. This tool is amazing, guys, for when you want things not to be there anymore. So you you see this crack here this ugly crack on the floor we want this to be gone so i press quick repair and i literally go over it like this and it takes it away for you and it blends it in with the rest of the stuff okay guys so we're back to my smelly face i'm sure you guys are so sick of seeing my hands all do all the fiddly fiddly shit so unfortunately guys my camera died i was like no because I need you film that segment for like over an hour. This video took so long to edit, guys, but I didn't really do anything else. So I literally just go on Facetune and then I go on to retouch for outfit photos because there's always something like my hairband is like in there and I can erase the hairband and then there's like something wrong with the background. Like I've taken out people from the background by using retouch. If you have someone photobombing, you can retouch their ass out, bitch. I really, really hope this video helped you guys out. I know so many people wanted to know how I do all my editing process process and how I take photos and stuff. This video is a long one so please understand that it took so long to edit and film so please show your appreciation down below by giving me a thumbs up and commenting and stuff. It means honestly the world to me reading your comments. I love it so much. Please let me know what video I should film next in this series because I love sharing my knowledge with you guys. I'm never ever ever in competition with everyone. I want everyone to do well so I really hope that you guys can see like how much I care about you guys and how much I want you all to do well because if I can do Instagram and make a full-time living out of it i'm sure 100 percent that all you guys can as well okay there's plenty of brand plenty of money out there to be made so please give me a thumbs up for this video if you enjoyed it make sure you subscribe before you leave please make sure you follow me on all my other social media platforms it's x tweely on snapchat twitter instagram and facebook i show tips like this on snapchat all the time so make sure you follow me there and i update daily on there and it's always really funny people tell me <laughs> so that's it for this video guys i've talked long enough please enjoy the bloopers if there's any left Bye guys, if you're still here. Anyone? No? Just me? Have you got my phone? Or your phone? Fucking slow poke over here. No one's got time to be slowing down for your ass! Girl, I am so goddamn shiny. What are you doing back there? I'm trying to push it. My camera. You're just making all this noise and scratch your bum hole. So annoying. I'm in the fucking groove. You're still going? Well, you pause now, so I'm going to do it. Eyes are rolling to the back of my head. The eye roll. Video about how. Oh my god. Bitch, why are you not I swear in every video the bloopers are saying, why are you not